So now that we have our alibrijes sculpted, sanded, and primed, we are ready to add a base layer of color. So this is where our color wheel is going to tie in with our alibrijes sculpture. You have two choices for your base layer. The first is neutrals. Neutrals are going to use white and black and where they blend together to create grays. The other choice is adjacent colors. So for this one, you'll want your color wheel as a reference. And for your adjacent colors, you must choose a set of three colors that include a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. So I can use my adjacent wheel. And as I told you before, I am partial to cool colors. So I'm going to use blue and green as my primary and secondary color. And I'm going to end up with the tertiary of blue-green. So what you can't have for your adjacent choices is two tertiaries and either a primary or secondary. So I can't have blue, green, blue, and blue, purple. Okay, so we want our tertiary color to be a mixture of the primary and secondary colors we're choosing. And there are three adjacent colors. So the process is simple. As you can see here, it has kind of a gradient look to it. I want to use the color base layer to enhance the form of my alibrijes. So areas where it's maybe rounded over up towards the light source, which is above me here in the room, I'm going to use my lightest color. And as I move away from that color, I'm going to get into my darker color. So here on my wing, this area was raised up further, so I started with white and added black and let that blend together. So let me demonstrate that to you. So on the underside of my wing, this area is raised higher. So I'm going to start with some white there. And I'm going to extend the white out a little bit past my raised area and then I'm going to wash out my paintbrush dry it because I don't want to water down my paint and I'm going to pick up some black and I'm going to start away from the white at first and as I start coming closer it will mix into where the white is wet still and start creating my neutral gray color. Now if my white starts to dry too quickly I can again wash out my paintbrush, dry it, pick up a little bit more white paint and blend these together. So you do have to work a little bit quickly to be able to get that blend of values with the paints. And remember, you want to wash out your paintbrush in between each of these because we don't want to contaminate our two colors together. So if I still need some pure white, I don't want to have it all mixed in with black. So that's why you want to take the time to wash out your paintbrush in between each application so that you don't have them contaminated with one another. So I want a little more white over here. Blend it into any black I have over here. So it's kind of like working with our value scales only now in paint. And remember black is a very dominant color so if you need to add a little bit more try to pick up just a tiny amount because it will overtake the white very quickly. So remember that. And 
And I will, of course, want to blend these together where my two forms are going to eventually meet. So that is an example of neutrals. With my adjacent color set, it's going to be very similar. Now, this one you will have a choice of using the colors directly out of the bottle as is, or mixing them with either white or black to create tints or shades of them. So I did create tints of those, so all I did was bring a little bit of my white I already had on my plate from demonstrating my neutrals. Brought it closer to these colors. And then, of course, just mix in some of my color into the white. Remember, when we're trying to go for a lighter color, a tint, we want to add the color into white, because again, white is very light and the darker colors will overtake it quickly. But white will not lighten this enough for a light color. I can control my light value, my tints better, by adding the color into white. So once I have that, I want my color that is going to be the lightest of the two between my primary and secondary to be the one that I start with and similar to the white, that lighter color, and in this case I'm going to use green because it's lighter than blue. Again, I'm going to look for an area that I want raised up and to highlight more and apply it. And just like I did with the neutrals, going to clean out my paintbrush. I'm going to pick up my darker of the two paints, start away from it, and work my way towards the lighter color, and let them mix to create the tertiary. In this case, it's going to be blue-green, since I am using blue and green as my two colors for my primary and secondary. Now you can of course control the tint. If I want this to be a little bit darker, I add more of my blue color into it and apply it where I want it darker. Now up here, this one I did earlier in class, the reason why it is a little bit more dark than what these ones are applying is because I had first demonstrated to them using just the colors out of the bottle. I didn't like that amount of darkness it had. As I said, I tend to like more of the pastel colors, so that's why I then mixed them with white and applied them over top of the green and blue and blue green that I had originally put on in the morning. So if you do start with the colors directly out of the bottle and you realize you want that lighter, you can let that dry and layer over top of it. Just remember that it will still affect the color because our acrylic paints are not the heaviest of bodies so it will still kind of show through those tinted layers so I could try a couple of layers onto here but realize if I do make that choice to change that then I may want to go ahead and cover my entire Alibriese with 
the colors directly out of the bottle and then come back with my tints in of the two colors. Just to make sure that it will all match for our base layer. So that is my next step to my Alley Brihase is to apply these base layers, creating gradients of either neutral colors or adjacent colors on to each section of the sculpture. And remember, we want to use those colors to enhance the form of our sculpture. After this base layer, we have one more process to finish our Alibri Haste-like sculpture, and that will be in the next video.